Good morning, Wolfpack. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023, and we are glad that you're here. I'm Marley with your announcements for today. Today's special rotation is going to be D. Today is Groundhog Day. It will be interesting to see if the groundhog sees a shadow. School will dismiss at 11, 10 a.m. on Friday, February 3rd for parent-teacher conferences. February 14th is Valentine's Day. February 16th is Title Math and Muffins. February 23rd. 20th through the 23rd is mid midwinter break. No school for t- teachers or staff. February 24th is a digital learning day, so no school for students. Students, please remember our HAL expectation. H is for honest, O is for organized, W is for well-mannered, and L is for listener. Reminder, students are working on access testing in the fourth grade hallway. Please stay quiet. Have a wonderful day in the wolf pack now for our weather. Good morning. I'm Tariah with your weather for today. It will be a 90% chance of rain with a high of 57 degrees and a low of 47 degrees. Now for our lunch menu. Good morning. I'm Adelie with your lunch menu for today. Today, today the cafeteria will be serving. At the time of this recording, the February lunch menus have not been posted. However, you will have your choice of milk. And now to Mr. Guest. Hello, boys and girls. Today, we watch a short video about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was an American social reformer, abolitionist, orator, writer, and statesman. After escaping from slavery in Maryland, he became a national leader of the abolitionist movement in Massachusetts and New York, becoming famous for his oratory and incisive anti-slavery writings. Stay tuned for more later about Frederick Douglass in our show. Now, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the national anthem. Have a great day. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first thing to understand about Douglas is that he spent 20 years as a slave, both on the eastern shore of Maryland and in Baltimore. He suffered or experienced virtually all the physical and psychological traumas and scarring that slavery could wreck upon a human being. He also had the good fortune of being sent by his owner, Thomas Auld, to Baltimore to a city, to an urban area where he not only found work in the docks, although dangerous work, 
but he was able to expand his literacy and expand his worldview and see the sailing ships and make friendships in the streets of Baltimore, not only with young white boys, but with older black preachers and eventually with the free black community of Baltimore. But Douglas left slavery with a rage in his heart, a scarring in his soul that he needed to vent and expend uh, throughout, frankly, most of the rest of his life. And he was very lucky, I would argue, that he was able to do this through language. He didn't have to do it through physical violence. Because he became such a master of words, he was able to expend that rage in his soul, in his speaking and in his writing. Millions of Americans saw their country, their story, through the ancient biblical story. But Douglas made the most of it. And he delivered few speeches that didn't have direct lines or paraphrases from especially Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. So only through those kinds of biblical stories could Douglas tell the story of his own people. Douglas's entire family went to war. He recruited two of his sons, Lewis and Charles, into the famous 54th Massachusetts Regiment. His third son, Frederick Jr., uh, enlisted to be a recruiter of black troops in the lower Mississippi Valley. And his whole family, in effect, was at war by 1863, whatever the outcome might be. Uh, and for Douglas, this war was what he had dreamed of, and its results also were what he had dreamed of. 